Question four, web design. You have been asked to finalize a web page for the school's intranet. Open the incomplete text file for web page in a web browser and also in an HTML editor such as Notepad++. All right, so we'll open this one. I've already set my default to open with Notepad++. And I'll just quickly run it in Chrome. I prefer working with them side by side like this so that I can see and refresh my changes quickly. Note the question numbers have been added as comments in the file to show you approximately where your answers should be inserted. Please do not remove these comments. And we've also got an HTML tag sheet that's been attached to the end of the question paper for reference. Your final web page should look like the example on the next page. It's extremely important to um, refer back to this screenshot very often to check that if you even slightly misunderstand something or some instruction, you can just refer to this and check whether it comes out the same. Add your surname so that it will display in the tab of your browser. 4.1, this is approximately, so it's in the head that I need to add it, but it will be to the title that I added. You obviously need to add your actual surname. Save and then refresh this page. There you go. 4.2, set the font of the heading Enterprises Galore 2018 to Elephant. Right, so this font needs to be Elephant. Now 4.2 over here, please don't just fall away and don't look at what they already or th what they already have here for you. They've already got a heading one and they've already included the end, end font tag. So you just need to include the opening tag. The H1 is outside, so the font they've put on the inside at the end. So I need to put it at the inside at the beginning. And we want the face of the font to be elephant. Save, refresh. There you go. 4.3. Make the following changes to the first table. Let's just double check that we can find it. All right, so it's this one. Center the table on the page. So first table over here, 4.3. Align center. There you go. So in the tables opening tag, I've included align center. Then set the distance between the text in the cells and the border of the cells to eight. So this is called cell padding. I always think of it as having a little bit of extra padding around your waist. That's going to be cell padding then. There you go. Next, format the table so that it matches the example shown below. All right, so at the moment we've got them in one column instead of in a single, um, in two columns in a single row. So we've got one table row, second table row. So basically what we want to do is we want to have this all in one row. So I'm just going to remove those two, the end and the close of the table row. Let's see if that worked. Excellent. Lastly, set the background color of the table to light yellow. BG color. And light yellow will always be typed. Any kind of description of a color will always be typed up against each other. 4.4. 4. Locate the text Big Walk Car Washes below the text Other Popular Enterprises Were. Change the text to appear as a list as shown below. Right, so they're using small Roman numerals for the Big Walk and Car Washes. Here we've got that. Okay, let's go down 4.4. All right, so they've already done something for us. Um, they've already marked it as a list item. Before we do that, I first need to specify what type of list it's going to be. It's going to be 
an ordered list because it's numbered. I'll just end the ordered list. Save, refresh. Excellent. And next I want car washes to be the next list item. So I'll add a, an LI there and end the previous list item at the top so that we have two items. And lastly, I'll change it to the um, Roman numeral type. And for that, I just include the first character sh to show them what it would will have to look like. 4.5. Add a horizontal line below the list of items as follows. The line must have a thickness of 2 and the line must extend across 3 quarters of the width of the page. Right, so underneath this, we want to add a line, 4.5. So firstly, to add a line is HR, remember? Horizontal rule. And the forward slash at the end is not compulsory. They give you the marks whether you include it or not. We want the size of it to be 2. Okay, can't really see much of a change there, but it must be a little bit thicker. But because there's no color assigned to it, one can't really see that. And we want it to span only a a three quarter of the page's width. So we need to express this in percentage, so that'll be 75%. There you go. We can quickly double check our question paper and just check that's what it looks like over here. Yes, that's correct. 4.6. Edit the second table to appear as shown below by following the instructions under the screenshot. All right, let's just find that and double check. All right, so here we are at the moment. This doesn't look at all what it should look like. So 4.6 second table. Let's have a look. So firstly, the text 420 is incorrectly displayed just above the table. Change the HTML code so that this text is displayed in the bottom right cell of the table as shown above. All right, so let's see why. 420 is in the right place over here, but it doesn't show in the right place here. That must mean the code is wrong. If you want to double check the code and just troubleshoot, you can't see the um, reason for the problem initially. You can click on the different tags and you'll see it shows you the open and closing tag. And this way you can quickly double check where the problem would be. So there we've got a row, but it's not ended properly. What's going on? That looks right. Ah, here's the problem. This is the first table data. This is the second table data, but this should not be a TR. This should be a TD for table data, not table row. There we go. Next up. Change the top row of the table as in the screenshot. So at the moment, it's just in the first column. It doesn't span all the different columns. So let's see how many columns we have. We have one, two, three, four columns. So the first cell we have, this one that says congratulations, needs to have a column span of four. There you go. Right, this first one looks very small now, but as soon as we put the picture in there, it'll be fine. Add the picture for welldone.jpg and it shows us where it's in this cell. Set the height of the picture to 100 and ensure that the word cheers will display if the picture cannot be displayed. All right, so actually, ideally, in this case, they've they've told us quite clearly what this is called. It's um, for welldone.jpg. So if you want to double check, just copy this and you can always go double check the properties to see what the type of file is. It's a .jpg, do you see? So in, now let's see, this is the first row. It must be in the second row and it's the first cell in the second row. So to add an image, I use img forward slash. And then I add a few attributes. The first attribute I'll add is the source, which is that file.jpg. Let's see. There you go. They told us that the height should be 100. And they said that we need to have text that will display if the picture doesn't show. So that will be alternative text. 
And they said that should be cheers. There you go. All right, so there's no way to really test this cheers other than actually making the picture not show. So if you want to test that, you can do something like that. Save, refresh, and you'll see it shows the right text. And then just remember to fix it afterwards. Remember the other purpose of alternative text is so that a screen reader that someone who can't see uses can actually tell them what this picture is. Otherwise, they just probably read the file name or something. So this gives them the description of what the picture is for a screen reader. Last question, 4.7. Locate the text, click here toward the end of the web page. There it is, click here. All right. Create a link on the text so that if the text is clicked on, it will open the file for summary PDF. I'm just gonna be lazy and copy this as well now if a PDF viewer is installed on the computer. All right, so firstly, to create a link, we will use an anchor tag before and after the click here text. Secondly, we are adding a hyperlink reference, href, to the file that they've given us. Save. And now if I click on that, it actually opens the PDF.